Um, this uh, thrust method, um, what I want to talk about is for this mid-range would essentially take place in the thrust right here, these two. And when I say that, what you would do with the thrust, and this is acceleration strength, okay? Um, if you do, for example, if you do a pause here, or let's say you start with a rebound, we'll start at the top. Rebound here, you're working reactive strength. Pause, you come down here, you pause in this position, you load it. Um, a lot of times, as you know, I'll be on my toes in these positions because that's where the athlete plays sports at. I will pause, it will work starting strength for my athletes, okay? Definitely an important aspect. The next one's metabolic jumping, which you would just come down and go up. The thrust method, what we get to is that we will basically go deeper into the thrust method. Using the thrust, we, we, we basically get to, to level one and we come out and reverse this. And we're not using full effort because we've gotten deep. We come out, we reverse it, and then as we get to this point, we thrust up with maximum effort. So you're teaching the athlete another gear to focus on this point because that's the point they need work in. That's the point where they need more uh, range uh, work to accelerate from here. Because some athletes could, here's how this works. Athletes can accelerate extremely fast here, but they lose the ability to apply force here. Okay, so basically on a, let's say you have a force plate and you look at the force, the slope, the slope's important because if, if an athlete dies off on his slope, on a force where this athlete can go up at a higher level because what transpires is, and actually I think the curve, you can see it sometimes like this. This blue athlete is the better athlete in regards to applying force at a, at a faster range of motion. So he needs to work on his thrust method here and here. And in my opinion, at least in the jumping athlete. But, but jumping is no different than hip extension. So what you have is a, a very effective way to increase the slope on the force plates because you want a lot of force over a shorter time in an athlete that, that uh, tapers off with their force production. Um, these methods of plyometrics work very well. Now, I'll give you a little secret, which will be in later videos. If you have an athlete that's super powerful, okay, super powerful, but they don't have great top end speed method, these two in the thrust method are the best, okay? So he's powerful here. His start's good in his 10, maybe his 20s, but then the top end speed move all, uh, drops compared to maybe the rest of the team. The thrust method will be the most effective in these ranges, and it needs to be done here, especially with the accelerated pyometrics. That's just a little secret of where we're, kind of a, a thing of where this is going, just to let you know. And then the AFSM method, obviously in this mid-range, is that you would land, you would come down, you're pulling yourself into position. As soon as you get into position, you timed it where you hit the ground. Now this is pretty magical, and this is, uh, you'll see the most advanced athletes that you have. So. What we were teaching our kids, especially some of my more advanced uh, uh, hockey players and, and a lot of the track kids, but, but, but athletes across all sports, I mean baseball, everyone, when they would do their plyometrics with the ASFM method, so they're pulling themselves in position, we told them, uh, let's say they're doing a hurdle hop, and what they'll do is they'll jump, and they're, they're, they're kind of straight, they clear the hurdle with some bent legs, but they're in position, and they're coming down, and they're timing this up, so they pull themselves in the position to land right there, okay? They land right there, and what transpires is that they're loaded and have just pulled themselves into position, and as soon as they hit the ground, they explode back up. So this AFSM method is, is kind of a timed, but what you'll find is your most advanced, your most explosive athletes have great ability to do that. Now, you may have to use lower hurdles, but I would rather have them do this method and use lower hurdles to get the timing correct, but it's pretty amazing. What happens is the athlete looks like a rubber ball going through these hurdles when you practice this AFSM method, and they and you've done some of these other things ahead of that AFSM to get the timing and get the coordination set.